Craig, how is the fitness concerns that you you were trying to manage? Is, is, it, is everyone who you were hoping to be fit going to be fit for this one, do you think? My knee's still giving me a bit of jack, but <laughs> apart from that, uh, nothing too much. I think everybody, I'm confident that everybody who we were worried about, other than um, Stephen Mason, who's not going to be fit, but, um, and Ollie Lee, of course, who picked up an injury against Celtic last year. So the others have done enough to make me feel that it can be useful. Uh, I, I still haven't you know, got a definitive team in my, in my head. If there's anything like that, some of those players who, who haven't played recently, haven't trained an awful lot, uh, I'm not certain that they'll all last for nine minutes. So, and again, might might go on longer than that. Um, so that, that side of things I need to manage quite carefully. But the, the good news, touch wood, we don't get any problems in training tomorrow, is that uh, most of our injuries are good. With that conundrum um, of players who are maybe not 100%, how do you, um, how do you juggle that, but considering you could have extra time? And it's, it must yeah, be a difficult decision for you. Yeah, it's part of the, it's part of the job, isn't it? It's to, to try and use each of the players in the best way possible, considering how much, <coughs> excuse me, considering how much energy they have is one of those things that, that becomes very important. So there are various different scenarios that could happen within the match, and the best thing is to have a plan for, for all of those things. So that's what we're trying to do this now. All the, the years that you've been involved in football as a player and a manager, what would it mean to you to finally lift a trophy, if you could do that on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, as a kid, going back when I, when I played at the uh, Hearts, and you, you qualified for Europe, and then were competing to win the league, you think that's normal. But I wasn't, you know, and these opportunities come around very rarely unless you're with one of the, the very, very, you know, well, probably two Glasgow clubs then who are regularly in finals. And that's why I admire, you know, people like Derek McInnes at Aberdeen who has managed to get his team competing at a very high level, European games, cup finals, cup semi-finals. And I think that's a place where uh, I feel we are getting to. Um, I feel our team's improving. Um, I want to be sitting here a couple of times a season, at least, if possible. How do you approach this game to be the team that stops Celtic's domestic dominance and that dreaded training? I'm just telling you, we've gone for the single single. <laughs> <laughs> just as important to us. Yeah. It, um, we have recent, we've got recent history of beating Celtic. Um, and I feel the, the, the preparation for for the game, particularly the last two or three weeks, has gone extremely well. Getting those players back makes me feel better, and uh, you know, the proof will be in the pudding, of course. But you know, we, we can beat Celtic. We've proven that. Uh, we've got a big a big occasion in us. I'm certain of that. And uh, it's just about all all bringing our A game at the right time, and, and possibly you know having a little bit of rubbery green. Well, that'll be needed. You see, you've got that big occasion, and you do you sense it from the players that the hunger and the desire there for Saturday? Yeah, yeah, they, they've had a frustrating season as well, and had injury problems and such like. And, uh, but they all, they all came here to, to Hearts to be involved in occasions like the one that we were, we were going to be involved in on, on Saturday. Um, and there's no place for, for feeling uh, nervous because the fact that they're all signed up to, you know, to play in this type of occasion. So for me it's excitement, uh, that, that is the overriding feeling uh, at this minute in time and I'm sure that the players are the same. What kind of message are you going to give to your players just before the kick-off, Craig? Is it more tactical or more inspirational? I think the, the 
tactics have pretty much been we've got some things to do on Friday and uh, that'll just box that off completely. So the rest of it is about the their individual motivation for doing what they need to do to get us uh, this thing at the end of the game. You must believe you can win that if you can reach the, the heights that your team showed in the first half of the season. Yeah, but we've, we've had some really good performances sporadically throughout the season. And that's what it sounds... There's one thing that frustrated me in, in our league form, but it actually gives me some hope uh, in this situation because I don't feel that our run of form has any bearing whatsoever on what we will do on, on uh, Saturday. It sounds a bit counterintuitive, but it gives me it gives me a great hope that, that as we've been Celtic already, we can do it again. And uh, having players available that I know are going to be available makes me feel good as well. So. I think people can talk about Celtic coming here on a regular basis as a, a, a positive for New Lens, say, but for you guys coming here as a rarity, do you see that as, as a positive for you that you Grab the sense of occasion and know what it means if you were here to grab it both hands. We made, we made a, um, a conscious decision to make us a special week. <coughs> our friends going up to uh, St Andrews would change their working week um, to make it feel again that it's a big occasion. Uh, we have recent experience of playing at Hamden and winning. We have players who played international football. Um, we have other players. <coughs> likes of Stephen Naismith who won't play but he, he came with us the, for the, to the semi-final and he'll do the same thing uh, to just to bring that knowledge to help share the, the knowledge with the younger players in particular so the whole week's gone really really well uh, so right at the beginning the proof's in the pudding of course come Sunday but I feel excited about where we are at this minute in time and what we're capable of doing on the weekend Craig, whenever you bring the curtain down in your, your career, whenever that may be, but will it feel, if you don't win a trophy, that, that it's incomplete in some way? Uh, two things. One, the curtain's not even been made yet, so it's only coming down. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, for me, I think I've been close on numerous occasions. And uh, of course, Everybody who's involved in, in football management wants to, to look back with you know pride on on winning this type of of, uh, of accolade or award or whatever you want to, to call it. So and I'm no different. You know, it's an opportunity for me as well as, a, as the players to to get their uh, hands on this thing. Is that also the same as playing career, obviously? Without a trophy in your playing career, is that sort of regret that you can say to your players, this is a motivator, you don't want to end your playing yeah. career? Without nothing I can do, I can do the, the playing career. <laughs> uh, that's just, that is what it is, you know. Um, there are any other things that I've not done? You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a huge thing for me. And, uh, I'd love to, you know, to be talking to you after the game on Saturday. I mean, if Craig, on a similar theme, flipping it slightly, is it all the more remarkable that nobody since, what, Hibs in 2016 has won any of the major trophies apart from Celtic? And you have some respect and admiration for that, I'm sure. Yeah, I have. I've got tremendous respect for, for the team who are as successful as Celtic have been. And uh, as much as they have more money than other teams, that doesn't always mean that you can you can have a clean sweep of all the trophies and this will be the third year. We had, you know, we were in the fortunate position of being able to stop uh, Celtic's long run of, of unbeaten uh, matches, which was a good thing for us again with some with something in there to, to help us with this uh, task at the weekend of stopping them winning this, this trophy. Uh, so, there are things that can help us, um, but I'm really not. I'm not really thinking about Celtic not getting their treble, treble. I'm thinking about us. And our players becoming heroes or legends or whatever term you would like to use for you know, for the team that wins the 
Scottish, Scottish Bank. So that's our focus and motivation rather than worrying about yeah, what's happening. Craig, Jake Mulroney's been one of your strongest players in the last few weeks, of course scored at the weekend. How crucial is he to the way you want to play on Saturday? Um, were you looking over my shoulder when I was writing the team? <laughs> no. uh, yeah, I'm not, I, don't, I don't want to give anything away with regard to, to who's going to be involved. Uh, suffice to say, Jake's, as the season has progressed, he has improved. His quality has improved, I think, getting a goal. Um, that's his first goal for the club that he scored uh, on Sunday. Uh, he just needs some time and encouragement to to be able to become a, a match winner for us. Um, and but all players are different, so some just take a little bit of nurturing and a little bit of time. And he's slowly improving. Uh, I've been I've been really happy with his uh, with his progress. Craig is a former national manager. What do you make of Steve Clark's appointment? I think it's a really good appointment. Really good appointment. The, uh, the biggest, the biggest thing uh, you know, for me is uh, the downtime. How he copes with that because it's uh, if you're used to being day in day out uh, in the firing line or on the touch line, taking training or whether you're playing in matches. It's so there's such a different mentality. Uh, it's a little bit harder to get closer to players than it would be in a, in a kind of club environment. Um, but anybody who gets it right, it's a fantastic job. I mean, like everybody's so desperate to, you know, to have a national team climbing the rankings and getting a, I was I was fortunate enough to do to, to go to uh, Italy um, in 1990. It will be, it's one of the things that will live long in, in, in my memory because uh, I only managed to do it once, but um, it was such a significant thing. <coughs> we all, as Scottish supporters, get uh, a little bit uh, we're in, we're in a bit of a hurry to get back to those days, but I think we need to build something before we can get back there. <coughs> On a consistent basis, and that for me is you know, the, the key thing is to, to have some patience and just wait. I know there's a lot of good young kids coming through in Scotland from uh, at lots of different clubs, and I'm very, very confident that we'll, we'll get back to those days. But we just need to be patient, and if we lose the first game, you know, that <coughs> calmness is required. But I absolutely believe. Stevie's the right guy for the job. Just finally, Craig, obviously with this fixture, the last time you used to say something, 56, the cup final, do you have any stories or memories of the guys from, did you get to meet any of the, <coughs> the captains that had to pass the way in January, but did you get to meet I, any I of the knew a, Yeah, I knew, I knew a lot of the players, obviously, not, probably more when I was playing, you know, there was, uh, there was quite a lot of the ex-players, obviously, would be in and around about the club at times, so, yeah, it's, it's 56, a long time ago. But yeah, I do have, I've met a lot of them, actually. But, uh, and that's what I say, these, these players are still very, very fondly remembered by our supporters of that era. Uh, and our players can do the same thing. You know, they can still be talked about in 30, 40, 50 years' time uh, and held in the same regard. Hearts heroes in those days were held. So, and so there's a lot of reasons for us to, to do this and get it right. Thanks. Good luck. Thanks, Thank you. <coughs> <coughs>